Um, hi, everybody. Um, welcome. This is Wednesday night with Kenny and Glenn and myself and Cassidy in the background. Um, this is our second presentation. Um, and this is all to help us understand better and reinforce what we already know. Uh, I have to do the disclaimer that uh, that you remember and promise that you understand that this is highly experimental and is not approved for therapy. Uh, you take full responsibility for building and running your system and you do so at your own risk. Just quietly say to yourself, I do, amen, and we're good to move on. So uh, off we go, Kenny, it's yours. Okay, so um, let's see, we'll also add that um, uh, this is not medical advice. Anything I say is um, my understanding of loop and what works for my daughter. If you make changes to you or your child's settings, um, that's on you. Good, okay. all right. So this is when you tap on the glucose graph, the top graph on the main loop screen. This is where you end up. So this is what I was talking about. Top one's the Walsh, then you have adult, child, and Fiasp. And you have these options down here. So again, don't use Walsh, don't do it. Uh, rapid acting adult and children and Fiasp. I think they're, they're fine, they're a good place to start. Um, what you can kind of see here though is the differences between them is the rapid acting adult uses a peak time. So peak time um, is, the, is the point at which the insulin is kind of working at its strongest when it's working the best. Um, so the difference between the adult and child and FIAS models, the only difference out of the box is when the peak time is set. So the rapid acting adult says, okay, after 75 minutes, the peak's gonna, like insulin's gonna be working its best. And so Loop uses that to uh, do a little bit of math in terms of like, do you need more insulin now up front or later, um, kind of paired with the absorption time. So getting an accurate peak is nice, uh, but until you kind of have your settings pretty close, it's hard to go in and look and then like, you know, the best would be a, um, just watching a straight bolus and seeing when BGs start to kind of move back down. Um, when that starts working the best. And so I, I, you can go in and look at your graphs and kind of like start to kind of track about how long from bolus to, to peak um, it seems to be. It's, it's kind of a guess and something you can watch. And I'll show you how to tweak it in a second if you want. But this is kind of like super fine tuning. So Katie had a post about fine tuning settings. This would be like super fine tuning settings. Um, so don't get hung up on this. This is definitely like, you want to be pretty happy with what Loop's doing the large majority of the time before you go in and mess with this. But that's the differences between these is really just the peaks when the strongest hit is from the insulin. Um, a later peak will naturally um, have loop suggest more insulin up front, uh, but it also can be a little bit slower to, to wait to give you more insulin later if you're kind of on a rise. But for carbs or boluses in that sense, um, it'll suggest more up front if you have a later peak is what Katie was explaining not too long ago. All right, so there's the insulin model. Um, so use it as recommended. This is definitely like advanced stuff you can mess with. Um, duration of insulin action or DIA is how long insulin has any impact on the body. Not like, not like impact that you love if you're like high, for example, but any impact at all, like any movement, one BG, any of it, right? A perfect basal you'd be no change, same blood sugar level the whole time. I mean, it's not practically gonna happen, but um, the duration of insulin action should represent just the very tail, the very end of insulin's action. And you can really only know that if your basal is really good. Uh, because if your basal is a little bit light, then you're gonna see um, your blood sugar start to go up sooner than let's say the six hour mark. Um, so it's not a really not a really good test. So for people that say, oh, the insulin doesn't have any action past three hours, their basal's wrong. Something else is wrong. So if you're in that camp, it's your fault, not mine. No, um, not Luke's fault. Uh, so insulin action, according to studies and experience, is going to be five to six hours. So control IQ tandem went with five hours. Luke goes with six. I think some of the studies show between like four and a half and like seven, actually. Um, and that's just really detecting insulin in the in the bloodstream is really that um, that seven six to seven kind of time frame. Um, 
So there you go. Uh, but if you want to lower the DIA after everything's really good and you've done all the stuff we're going to cover in the next session about setting your basal, then you can come back here and mess with uh, insulin action if you want. But I would say no lower than five. What would be the indicator that you say, gosh, I think I need to shorten the duration. When would you um, decide to do that? I could probably do a whole session on that. But um, okay. yeah, the short version is, so the way I noticed it on my daughter, I already knew what her action time was, but the uh, way I noticed it is if you're kind of, if you use what we're going to talk about um, on Sunday about how to find your basal as your guide, and what happens is then you open loop with that same basal rate and you end up going low a bunch, meaning that that one that looks like it's great in closed loop doesn't quite match how open loop works. Um, then that's usually your indication that, you know what, like um, loop thinks I need more insulin, but really what's happening is it's because the insulin's overrepresented in the system. So for example, I had to run a 0.25 to 0.3 basal rate for my daughter to get her relatively straight at night, but she was still pretty bouncy. And we had really smooth, like kind of 1 a.m. to wake up time on shots and on the PDM. So um, the, basically I, I'm like, okay, fine. So I tried to get Luke working and I had to increase her basal by quite a bit. Um, she's actually running a 0.15 at the time. So I had to almost double it to get Luke to sort of work right overnight. And as soon as I brought the basal, the insulin action time back down just a little bit, then those numbers started to smooth out because I could run an open loop of 0.15, but I had to do a closed loop in point, at 0.25. So for little kids, it's, it can be more dramatic. For adults, um, you're probably going to be fiddling with a 0.05 to 0.1. Um, basal rate differences can be significant, but um, the biggest risk is that open and closed loop don't match. So if you do disconnect uh, from your right link, you may have some, some challenges. So that really the only way to test is to kind of get close and verify that that is that even loop agrees that that's your basal. Um, and then try that one in open loop a couple times to make sure you're steady. And if you're going low as a result, then uh, you probably need to back it down a notch. And if you back it down a notch and close loop and you're always a little bit above target, it looks like you need more basal, but you really don't. Um, and you need to try ISF and a bunch of other things we can talk about next time. Uh, go through a series of things to just really weed out that it is in fact action time that is your problem. So you really need to eliminate everything else before you go to changing this. But if you want to change it, I put a leak, link in the deck basically, but it's got a link to a page on LoopDocs. It gives you this picture with some other text about how to get here. But And the line numbers have changed since the screenshot's been taken. But essentially what you're going to see is there's these two uh, switch statements. You'll see this is a kind of a coding thing. You see switch, and then it says self, and then it says case. So there's cases here. So case one is humilog, novolog, adult. Case two is child. Case three is fiast. It's basically just saying if it's a big if statement. If it's adult, or if it's the child model, or if it's the fiast model, do like send back this number for insulin action time and peak. So you can change any of these three to do whatever you'd like. So if you think you need, you get to the point where you've weeded out everything, ISF, basal, all that, and you've done all the stuff we're going to talk about over the next couple of sessions, then you can come in here and you can take one of them. For example, my daughter will never use the FIAS model. We just don't have FIAS covered and it's not a thing we're going to do. So I can take the FIAS uh, DIA and change it to 300 minutes. So it's five hours long and then change the peak to 65 if I'm running the child model. So now it matches the child model's peak, but I'm using a different uh, DIA. Now when I go back into loop, if I want to try this out and I find out it's not working so well for me and I really need to go back to six hours, then I can come back in here and I can just tap back and forth between these models, right? It's a simple, I don't have to plug my phone back in and go into the code and change the code and do a new build. I can just switch between the models because I've sort of commandeered the FIAST model to do what I want it to do. And that visually will change up here. So this FIAST line, this bottom one here, would end up matching kind of the child one. And then it would like end a little bit earlier, like kind of right here. So um, that's kind of the, that, that's kind of the trick if you want to test insulin action or test peak. If you're testing peaks, let's say you're like, oh, I think it's, 
I think my kids uh, peak is between 65 and 75 minutes and I'm not sure which. So do six, change only the peak times to all three of these models the 75, 70 and 60. And just kind of try them and see if you notice a difference day to day. Um, so that's something you can, you can try to. So if you want to play with this, you can just grab the models and change them if you're not afraid to make the code changes. Um, well, Kenny, there's a couple of, there's, I think it's just one person, but there's a little bit of a discussion in the chat right now on mixing insulin, which is pretty common for adults. Like a too. Fiesp and, um, and Humalog together, Between, for example. Yeah, like Fiesp and Humalog or Novolog. Is that a suggestion to like use the adjustment of the Walsh model to figure out what the actual peak time should be if you're doing a mix? I wouldn't do Walsh, but you might want to do, so if an adult, um, adult Humalog or Novolog is, a 75 and the fiasco was 55 the easiest thing to do is just use the child model because it kind of splits the difference in the peaks you see it goes to 65 so if it's between 75 and 55 and you're mixing them together you could try the 65 so you really you could just go into the code and change it or just try the child one and you might have a good mix there hopefully that helps um a fresa oh two other thing insulin delay so when you look at the peak times on here, uh, loop assumes a 10 minute delay before insulin does anything. So it expects pretty much no impact from insulin for about 10 minutes. Um, so as a result, like when you're looking at the peak, it's really the peak plus 10 minutes. So 75 to 80 is really 85 minutes and 65 is 75 minutes after you give a bolus. So if you're gonna go in and try to look at your peaks, make sure you're adding a 10 minutes in because that's the, what Luke's doing. Um, a Freza is the question that keeps coming up. Don't do it. It doesn't follow this model. It's not anywhere close to this model that you see here. So, you know, if you're going to take it, just take it. And um, Luke will see you're trending down, and the momentum should be enough um, to cut basal and kind of balance it out. So I, most people that take a Freza have all said that they don't answer it. I don't know of anyone that says they do because the insulin models are so different. Teresa says, and I'm doing the same thing, is uh, she logs it in um, in Night Scout as a note. And that's what I Yes, doing. yes, an excellent thing for our Night Scout conversation. But yes, you can go into Night Scout and just enter a bolus, and it's not going to affect Loop Loop. doesn't read Night Scout. So if you wanted to make a note of when you took the Afreza so you could kind of see what the impact was, or just remember that you took it, um, definitely a good thing to do. Um, I know, like, Katie D. Simone's mentioned that she does that with her daughter's low treatments. She enters the she has a little shortcut or something that enters the the low treatment into Night Scout only. It doesn't enter into Loop. So um, that way everyone can see it and um, it's not affecting Loop's prediction. So the model is just too different and Loop can't say, oh, well, this injection was, you know, a four-hour action time or a three-hour action time with a 20-minute peak. And then all the other ones are this other, like, six-hour model. So you kind of got to pick one. It's the way it's built. So... Just don't anybody disagree with not entering it? I don't anyone that's wanted to enter it. I think it doesn't usually work out. So 